Air Asia says it may have to furlough more workers. That's unless domestic coronavirus travel curbs end next month. The airline has expedited expansion of its non-airlines business to fill an earnings hole, but a pickup in domestic travel remains critical to growth. The Malaysian government has not said when it will reopen domestic travel nationwide. Air Asia has already slashed nearly 3,000 jobs. For more, Shukur Yusuo, founder of Endow Analytics, joins us now. Now, airline stocks have bounced off their lows with the rollout of vaccination programs. But what's the longer term outlook, you think? Well, as long as COVID is still around, I think the outlook is very bleak still, uh, notwithstanding the rollout of the vaccine. So this is the problem that's facing the industry worldwide. Um, and that would probably take two, three years, perhaps even longer, as long as the, there is no um, uh, no clear way of eradicating COVID. Then we'll have to live with it. And airline has to readjust their strategy in light of the ongoing virus that's uh, pre prevalent around the world. Right, Air Asia, which is reportedly looking to furlough more staff, that's if domestic flights don't take off. The company is also urging ASEAN to come up with a uniform travel policy. Now, is this likely to happen? It's very difficult to see that happening anywhere because governments of individual countries have different approaches to dealing with the pandemic and they all have to uh, weigh in many factors uh, of safety, of, uh, of politics, and, and, and so on. Uh, so it's a, it's a good idea that AirAsia has put forward. I think we do need clarity. We do need governments to come together, especially in, in an economic block like ASEAN, uh, where there are about 650 million population and a huge uh, aviation uh, marketing space. Uh, for the manufacturers. So unless that happens, we're not going to see anything opening up anytime soon. So uh, let's hope that uh, we can get together, governments can come together and do something about it. All right. And that begs the question, almost a year since WHO declared COVID-19 a pandemic, but what else can airlines do to survive? Well, airlines have done as much as they can. They've got support from government. Some of them have, like Singapore Airlines, like... Uh, Malaysia Airlines recently, uh, but at the same time, I think it's still a very challenging outlook out there. All they can do is hope that things will recover quickly. But again, as uh, the virus is still ongoing, we don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So the best they can do is preserve cash, uh, conserve cash, preserve the liquidity, uh, look for opportunities like what Asia is doing, um, selling food, online or, or by grab or by delivery modes and, and looking at various other methods where they can eke some form of revenue from uh, from from different kinds of customers instead of uh, from passengers flying the aircraft. Right. A lot of debate about digital health passports. Does the recovery of air travel depend on it? I think uh, it's, it most likely will do very much like uh, the yellow fever passport that one would uh, need to take if you were traveling to Africa or to South America. Uh, it would add to the cost. Uh, unfortunately, that is something that is inevitable, I think, uh, especially now that the push to have people get vaccinated is, is ongoing, so that it gives some form of comfort to passengers who are going to fly, knowing that Others on board an aircraft have also been inoculated. So that is something I think uh, will be a new norm, to, to put it that way, uh, in, in the near future. All right. Thank you, Shukor Yusuf from Endow Analytics.